Welcome back everyone to our gameplay series of Farming Simulator 17. So today is another big day. You notice in the top right hand corner we have quite a bit of money, $729,000. And we've already talked about what we're going to do with that. So we already have plans in mind. But if we take a look at the map real quick, you can see we are ready to get started on each of the fields that we currently own. So let's go ahead and get these guys up and running. Get these courses loaded and get them on their way. There we go. That way we can keep the income flowing. We've got enough for right now, but this is nowhere near enough for us to do what I want to do uh, long term. We're going to need quite a bit of equipment in order to really get started um, on the on the line of work that I want to, which is namely. Uh, raising things like wheat and barley and, and maybe some sunflowers, things like that, uh, going forward. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and get everybody mowing their grass. There we go. And then we'll head over to the field, make sure everybody's going. Okay, looks like this guy, when I stopped earlier. Looks like he was right in the middle of the street. Alright, there we go. Everybody up and moving. Not quite. There we go. Okay, this guy is completely out of silage, as you can see. And I would imagine, yeah, zero on the other side, so good. We're all set there. 2,500 is where he is. Okay, we're not ready for the fertilizing just yet. This guy is off and running. Okay, looks like we are off and running with everything. Uh, again, zero on the grass side. Yes, that is exactly what I would expect. And 48,000 here. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So he's almost done there. So one thing I want to take a quick look at. So we, we talked about what we're going to do in, in uh, today's video is we're going to go over here and purchase field number 26. And then, of course, we'll start our odyssey of purchasing all the equipment that we're going to need long term to take care of this and hopefully some other fields as we grow uh, some of the different crops. But before we get to that, I do want to show you that I have purchased some more cows. And let's first take a look over here. You can see we're now at 401 cows. And of course, all of this is blanked out for right now because I just started up the game. So it'll take a few minutes in game time uh, to get all of this up and running, but we are, as you can see, still running uh, very close to 70%. Uh, as I mentioned, I generally like to take the very last load of grass from over here on uh, field number 28, and I dump that in as grass just to keep that extra uh, around 20% to the productivity, and that obviously helps out quite a bit when it comes time to get that milk revenue. And speaking of the milk revenue. If we scroll down some, you can see harvest uh, income has really been doing good. 738,000 in the most recent game day for me. And again, that was simply because I left uh, the game on uh, a very slow time multiplier. And then you notice 81,000 in uh, milk there. And then you notice how that goes from 81,000 way up to 179,000. So yeah, quite a huge jump there, basically doubling our revenue. And again, that's simply because we now have about 400 cows. And whenever this finally does fill in, you can see it's taken us somewhere around four hours uh, to for the animal husbandry to kick in. So yeah, we're getting uh, multiple new cows every game day, but we still have quite a bit of work to do before I am anywhere close to happy with our numbers uh, in that department. Okay, let's move back over to our map. So we're going on up and going on everything. Let's go ahead. One of the reasons I like to keep these, these icons up here for all the jobs on the different fields is because it enables me to quick travel very easily. So we're going to choose field number 26 and visit that one. And you can see right now it's actually ready to be worked and if we press R you can see that very thing uh, he would pay us 
almost $32,000 to do that. But of course, it's going to take quite a while, uh, well beyond the scope of what we have time for in this video. Otherwise, I would do it because that's a nice amount of money. But again, we don't really have time for that in this particular video. We're sort of limited to uh, to things like fertilizing and maybe seeding on some of these fields, that kind of thing is what we have time for. But what we are going to do is we're actually going to purchase this. And you notice that we have a little bit of goodwill with him. So we have a little bit of reputation here with Robert Cook, uh, not near enough to get a substantial reduction in the cost of this particular uh, field. But it's a little bit and every little bit helps. So we're going to go ahead and buy this. So now we own it. So before we get there, I'm not really familiar. This doesn't look like really anything to me. Is that soybean? Is that what that is? Let's come back over and where are we? Soybean. Yes, that is actually, that is what's on there. So we get to uh, keep that. So we buy the field and we get the crop. I actually wasn't sure what was going to happen there. This is the first time I purchased a field uh, with it not being in the state that was either ready to be fertilized or simply in the cultivated state. So now that we've got that taken care of, uh, let's actually come into and look at the harvesters. I want to see about the headers here. So we've got two, actually let's go harvester first. So the one I have picked out and is sort of a middle of the road. I picked out between, it was between really the uh, Massey Ferguson and a couple others. And I really like the case. Uh, I really like this one as well, but I started looking at it and I really couldn't justify the increasing cost for where we are right now. Again, money is a little bit tight. Uh, if we win a few more game days, it would not be. But in trying to keep things uh, moving right along, I think the Massey Ferguson is the best deal for now. And then who knows where we'll be later on because I'm really hoping that we have a need for several of these over our time. So here we go. We're going to purchase the Massey Ferguson 200 and 2000. It lets us know that we've got a couple of attachments that would actually work. A couple of headers. One of those is for uh, corn uh, as well as I think sunflowers if I remember correctly. Okay, let's go ahead and purchase this 200 and 2000. Again, we're doing all of this remotely just because we have the money to. All right, so let's get in here. I believe if I remember correctly, this is compatible. Of course, that's what we would use, yeah, for the sunflower and then the corn, but we're not really ready for that just yet. We're ready for this one. I believe this is available to us. Now, it said free flow on the other on the other page, and there is a free flow over here. I'm not sure we can actually use this one. This is quite a bit larger, um, and I don't believe that is available to us. So let's actually go back over to the 25 foot. Yeah, yeah. based on this, uh, I believe this is the one we want, which is perfectly fine with me. Again, we're not trying to get the biggest, baddest one here just yet. So this is a 25 footer. We are going to be purchasing this one as well. Okay, let's go ahead and back out of here and let's tab our way till we get over to the store. There we go. And we can pick up our brand new combine and header. So let's see. One of the things I actually meant to look at but uh, forgot while I was in here is, okay, yeah, it's showing that we can indeed work the soybeans. All right, let's get this thing attached. And I think we're actually going to head out uh, this way instead of taking the back roads. And let's see how much stuff I actually run over in the process. So we're going to stick toward the center of the road. But yeah, I wasn't sure that they were going to leave the crop on the field for us. I wasn't exactly sure how that was going to work. I about halfway expected it to uh, wipe that off and just give us a clean uh, cultivated field rather than rather than leaving the crop there, but that's perfectly fine with me. We'll take that crop and this will be one of the first time, maybe the first time, 
that I've dealt with soybeans, so this will be a new experience for me, and that's the idea. All right, so we're going to be coming up on our field here to the right, just past these buildings. We'll begin to see our particular crop. All right, and for now, I'm not going to disable the straw uh, for now, although I don't believe I'm going to actually pick it up this time. Uh, we're, I'm going to probably get wait until we get uh, some new equipment before I worry a whole lot about about that. Again, we could use that, and uh, if memory serves me correctly, we can actually get that uh, and turn it into silage as well. All right, let's go ahead and get lined up here. All right, let's make sure this starts to work just as I need it to. So far, so good. Okay, yeah, there we go. So we're not getting any straw here, even though I did not disable the swath. So I couldn't remember if if the soybeans gave us that, and it looks like they do not. All right, let's take a look inside here. And as always, I'm not sure how anybody in the game is able to, not with this, this field of view anyway. I mean, it would be extremely hard without some mods that will help you out with this, but it would be extremely hard for me to keep this thing straight and not miss out on anything because that is just an odd angle for me to keep lined up. It feels like, like in order to, without increasing the field of view, if I, if I try to keep my view straight ahead, then it's very hard for me to see over here to the left-hand side uh, to this particular edge. And if I don't do it over this way, I don't, I don't know. That's just it's a weird look, and that's why I spend so much of my time on the outside because that's about the only way that I can make sure I have any shot of going in the right direction. All right, looking in the bottom left-hand corner, I don't see any any notifications that let me know anybody's gotten stuck or, or having any trouble. Nobody's done just yet. So we're going to hang in here with our sort of a middle of the road Massey Ferguson right here. If we come back in um, long term, you know, we've got a, a few down here at the bottom, sort of your beginning. This would be sort of where the middle of the road, I would think, jumps in here. You take a, a nice jump in... Uh, the amount that it can handle and then of course very quickly you get into the extremely expensive um, and it's it's at this particular point in the gameplay it's hard for me to justify picking one of these these top ones simply because they're twice the price I mean we paid a little over two hundred thousand for ours and and these models are twice that uh, and I just really can't justify that not right now. Again, if I wanted to keep selling silage and going that route, then yeah, give me another uh, day or so of of gameplay of selling silage, then we'd be perfectly fine to do this. But that's not really what I am interested in just yet. All right, now we are at looks like about thirty percent full. I need to track down where is where is our guy? Okay, perfect timing. He is headed back over. I'm actually going to stop him because I need to take him. And right now I don't have, um, haven't done any any work um, with the tippers. So I'm going to do this manually for now, which means that you're going to have to suffer through my terrible driving. So we're going to bring this guy over and sort of park him nearby. But my long-term goal is the bakery is just right over there. Okay, so that's where I plan on taking our crops from this particular field and selling them. And in general, that's, of course, that is a compromise because it is not going to give us necessarily the... Uh, the best price. So if we look at the bakery here, I mean, it is right now the best price for wheat, uh, but that might actually be it. That might be the only thing it's the best price in. 
Uh, right now, not bad for soybeans. Not the highest, but not terrible. And just looking at some of these others, uh, of course, potatoes are way too time consuming for us right now. Same thing with the beets. Uh, sugar cane, yeah, that's, I mean, it's okay. The bakery is okay, but certainly not going to give us the best price. But I'm not necessarily interested in chasing down the best price all over the place. Right now, I want to set things up for uh, consistency, and we'll branch out. There are a whole lot of fields for us to purchase on this map, and uh, if we're fortunate enough that the series goes anywhere close to that long, then we'll eventually be selling at nearly all, if not all, of these selling points. All right, a little over 50% left here. So, all right, so we're in good shape. I also noticed that in the bottom left-hand corner, somebody is done. There he is. First field is done. Field number 12. Uh, let's see. He is actually almost full. So let's go ahead and load him up. Or unload him, rather. As we load up our field 14. Okay, so we are in real time right now. Let's go that let's jump that up to five times speed. So a small jump. Okay, there we go. So now let's get him over to field 14 so that he can continue making us some money. So we got 135,000 left, and there are a couple of things that I want to do pretty soon. Uh, one of them is I want to purchase a sower that is has a, a much wider working width. We have that basic beginning uh, sower and it's not really what we want to have for the any type of a bigger field. Now it works okay for fields like these that are somewhere around this size, but uh, anything much bigger and definitely anything close to fields 26 and 28, it just takes too long and it's really not uh, effective for us and, and something we want to be doing long term. But the problem with purchasing that a particular sower that is uh, a much wider working width, well, the problem with that is it takes a bigger tractor, a more powerful tractor. So we're going to have some money to earn before we can get anywhere close to having that type of money. And let's go ahead and head back over to this guy. Looks like he's at 75, so he's three quarters of the way full. Let's come back into, uh, let's see, where do we need sewing machines? Let's go, again, I'm really not looking for one of these three. I like this one, simply because I don't have to worry about cultivating all the time. I can simply go uh, straight into the sewing. It's 96,000, and it will sew nine meters wide, and if I remember correctly, that is three times, yes, that is three times the working width of what we have now. So it'll get done in a third of the time, assuming that the speeds are comparable. 12 miles an hour there, nine there. Okay, so that's even better. Okay, I really like this quite a bit. So I like this one, but it requires a 270 horsepower engine. And then you can see we go up from here. This one's actually not bad at all, but... Uh, we would still have to cultivate, which means an extra step. Same thing here. And then, of course, you get a huge one here. Also, no cultivating required, but a quite sizable uh, engine is required. So either one of these would be fine. But again, uh, a little bit of extra working with here, which is always nice. But it's a little bit slower. And... The price is just, that's just a huge difference. So for now, I think I'm just going to stick with this one. It seems to be a pretty good bang for our buck, uh, given where we are. Now, of course, we have money for this one right now, but we need to figure out how we're going to pay for 270 horsepower. So as we scroll our way through some of these, 
you can see any of these at the bottom are nowhere near what we need. In fact, we don't even approach anything close to what we need until we get into, where is it at? Right here, the Lamborghini's still not there. Yeah, till we get to JCB and then uh, beyond. So we've got a few options here. And of course, we could get into worrying about, you know, how much per day. Uh, we could talk about the amount of fuel and so on. But for the most part, we can we can surmise it's going to take us at least two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in order to get going uh, on this. So it's going to take us a little while. Not definitely not a purchase that we're probably going to be looking at today. All right, we're so close. Let's go ahead and hop over. going to grab the tipper and see if I can make this turn. Oh yeah. But again, long term this will be something that I'll be setting up a route so that it can happen automatically, but for now. And particularly because I did not expect for us to be doing uh, any selling of resources today. I didn't think there was going to be any harvesting today. I thought I would be spending the time um, we'd actually be sowing this field, but fortunately for us, we're not going to have to worry about that just yet. This is even better than what I had thought we were going to get. Alright, so this particular tipper is plenty big enough, realistically. I mean, you can see, I mean, eight, roughly 8,600 uh, is all we're using and we have room for 21,000 so we can actually just hang out here if we wanted to uh, but for our purposes I'm gonna go ahead and sell this I mean we're right here at it I actually could have went straight across but yeah since we're so close let's just run over here to the bakery and go ahead and get this sold so give me my first indication as to how we're going to do on uh, soybeans without doing the manual calculations by looking at the prices. Okay, how much do we get? Oh, wow. Not bad. 17.5. You can see that in the top right-hand corner. So 17,500. That is quite amazing to me that we got that much because we have a huge field there so we're going to end up with uh, quite a nice harvest out of this particular field. Let's go ahead and park right over here on the side. Now, admittedly, I am bad about parking on uh, fields. I do it a lot. I know there are mods out there that would keep me very quickly from doing that. But yes, I'm bad about that, so I have to constantly remind myself, let's don't park on the fields. Let's don't use them as parking lots and storage facilities. Alright, let's actually see what the pricing is. Okay, that's pretty high there, which would generally tell me if they're trying to keep some sort of balance in the game, and I have no idea if they are or not, uh, especially with the amount that the economy changes from day to day, that would tell me that there should be a lot less volume, a, a lot smaller harvest than something like, say, wheat or barley, but I'm not sure. Again, this will be the first time I've done uh, most of this stuff. But that is quite quite a hefty price tag. So again, I'm just going to assume that we're going to get a smaller harvest. And I'll keep my eye out for... I try to gauge it by... Whenever we're about halfway done with the field, I'll see, okay, how many harvests is that? How many harvests have we done about halfway through the field? And then that'll give me a better idea. In this case, I know we're going to get at least two before we reach halfway. So that my guess right now is we're probably going to have about five. So not bad at all. So we're going to have somewhere north of eighty to ninety thousand in uh, revenue from this particular harvest. So not bad, not bad at all. Okay, let's check in on these guys. See how they're doing. Okay, 155,000 in there so far. Okay, looks like actually he just dropped off. 
me try and get back lined up again. All right, we're done over here. And by the way, it does not take long for these strips there of uh, mowed grass that have not been picked up. It does not take long for them to accumulate some very large numbers. In fact, after every probably three to four um, harvest, I like to just take the loading wagon by and pick up some of those because you can get quite a bit of grass just from doing that. Alright, everything is moving quite nice. I am very happy about this. Let's go ahead and hop back on board. You see the combine pulling in everything through into the center. Very nice. So we are about 50% here. You can see we haven't covered all that much. There's still a lot left to do. So yeah, I'm guessing I'm guessing five uh, five combines full will be about right. As soon as we're done, I do need to check on that uh, whether or not the uh, the swath was indeed disabled I thought it was enabled by default but I could be wrong my guess is at this point the soybeans simply just don't give it to you uh, that would be my guess but I'll make sure whenever it's done that it was indeed enabled by default and it's simply a soybean uh, issue that we're dealing with because as I mentioned I don't need it right now we could use it for the cows but just based on what I'm looking at with the cows, let's go ahead and pull that up. You know, we have room for, I'm not sure how much straw, but we've got room for straw there. But I don't know that it's going to give us a very large percentage jump to do that. I mean, every little bit helps, obviously, but I'm not sure it's going to give us a big enough jump that it would be worth it. So with that in mind, uh, I'm probably just not going to mess with the straw for now. Um, I'll leave it there because it's not going to hurt anything if it's there. And whenever we're ready to uh, to sow the field again, it won't be an issue uh, if it's still down there. So I'm, I'll leave it there uh, whenever we are growing something like wheat or barley. Uh, just in case I want to bring the loading wagon over and actually... Uh, work our way through the field and at least gather some of it but for now I'm not terribly worried about it we've got more grass uh, being grown over here on field number 28 than we can possibly uh, deal with we don't have enough cows to need it all just yet so right now we're simply selling the excess to try to save up for some of these large purchases so we'll just continue to do that for now and if I'm not careful I'm going to end up with a whole lot of extra stuff going on and it's going to make it really hard for me uh, to get done what I need to get done off camera between episodes. So I don't want to do that. We ran into that on our pure farming series and it got to a point where there was just so much going on that we had to go a different route. But, but hopefully it won't become uh, too much here on this, particularly since we're using course play. Once again, let's just take a quick glance. Make sure nobody is... Okay, this guy's almost done with field 14. So he is moving right along. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. Okay, looks like he's moving on. There you can see we have just a little over two hours until we get cow number 402. So... Four and three quarters hours between each new animal. And of course that will continue to come down as we continue to purchase more and also as more continue to be born. Now if we look down here at field 28, you can see he is better than halfway done 
on this particular field. So things are moving right along. We are at least at least approaching halfway on field 26. And with that in mind, okay, yeah, he is at 90%, so he's getting there. So this is going to be two full, uh, two full combine loads, that is, not tipper loads, but combine loads before we reach halfway on the field. So again, my number of five, or my guess of five, I should say, looking pretty good right now. Let's go ahead and hop back over because as soon as this guy turns around, I'm going to try to head up next to him and see if we can't get him emptied out without him having to stop. Let him get adjusted and get his bearings. And then we'll hit up next to him. There we go. I think this is about right. Yeah, there we go. That should be good. That way we can save a little bit of time. Of course, we'll be finishing this up off camera. I'll let you guys know exactly how everything turns out but yeah we're looking to be in really good shape with the soybeans we'll have to come back to this we'll have to check and see exactly which uh, of our sowers can can actually plant that hopefully the one that we plan on purchasing will all right so it looks like we've got him all emptied out just guessing from the 92, 9300 that we have right now. But hey, while we're here, we might as well stick with him. We'll just keep going. No reason not to at this point. This would be a good time for that cruise control set to about five miles an hour or so, five or six. Yeah, we're going to end up with a nice haul here. Pretty close to 10,000 liters. We've already seen that that's going to get us close to 20,000. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, leave him be. Once we get to the end down here, we'll go ahead and take this off to sell. All right, there we go. So we'll leave him to it and we'll head off. We have almost 10,500. So definitely more than a standard combine load, but we will definitely take that. And of course, we could have stayed with him for longer until we got full. But we're running a little bit low on time in today's video. But yeah, this has worked out much better than I thought. I thought we were, again, I thought we were going to have to sow in uh, today's video. But we ended up with a nice free harvest. We purchased the land at the perfect time. And so we're going to get a nice harvest out of this thing. Again, somewhere between 80 and 90,000 most likely is somewhere in that neighborhood. So that definitely helps offset some of that purchase price. There we go. We'll hop back over. So we're all set on our cows. I have filled up and uh, which you could see as we worked our way through uh, the screens earlier. And for now I'm going to leave this guy just sort of here out of the way. We'll come back over to our harvester and let's take one more quick look at, uh, let's see, is it going to separate that for me? It is not. So you can see some of the purchases, field and vehicles, all that sort of thing. We got our milk in there. But yeah, unfortunately, it lumps all of this into harvest income. I really wish it would... Uh, I really wish we had a way to divide that out. 
Uh, but ultimately, it's no big deal. It's, it's all going into the same place, the same bank account, but just be nice to, to be able to divide out and get more of an idea. So you can see here, uh, cleanliness, I usually take care of that about once a day. It gets down uh, fairly low and then I come through and uh, clean all of that up. Uh, water's looking very good, probably four or five days worth there, about five days worth of silage. And then we'll keep the grass up there as best we can to keep that higher percentage. We're at 62% now. So again, the straw would definitely help, but I'm not sure it would help enough uh, at this point to really be worth a, a special trip for us. Unless we just wanted to turn it into uh, turn that straw into more silage. Now, if we wanted to do that, we could definitely get some money off of that huge field for that. But again, that's later on down the road. I'm trying to get to a point to where we can purchase dedicated equipment, maybe not per field, but per every couple of fields, not because we have to, because it's more fun. So, and that's really what this is ultimately all about. Let's get this guy all straightened out. Get him going the right way. I mean, you look at these fields. After being on field 26 or 28. Wow, that is an interesting angle he's going to have to start. And these fields just look puny. I mean, they are incredibly small, comparatively speaking, but they are making us a very nice source of money. Let's go ahead and get... Get started with the fertilizer as well. But yeah, I feel like this is, is serving as a very good primer uh, to, to get me going and get me ready for Farming Sim 19, which will be coming out uh, this fall. So very interested to see how that turns out. Very interested also to get a gameplay trailer. I am not a huge fan of the types of trailer that they just recently released. I don't care for the CGI and the reason is even though it looked great that's not what I'm going to be seeing when I play the game. I want to see a trailer done with actual gameplay footage. That's what I'm interested in. So as those come out as we get uh, I work our way toward release those are the ones I'm really interested in ultimately seeing. Uh, we, know, we already know we've gotten uh, the, one of the big reveals was the fact that we're going to have John Deere that are going to be in the game so that I know is very exciting for a lot of people especially those folks who are diehard green but for my purposes I'm interested to see what sort of gameplay mechanics they're adding in and what sort of new stuff we're going to get are we going to get any new animals to work with uh, there were horses in the trailer so maybe but you just never know it's uh, something to keep our eye on, and I'm sure there are going to be several more trailers that will be released as we get closer to time. So, with that in mind, I think we're going to leave it here for now. Thank you very much for joining me, and stay tuned as we continue our gameplay series of Farming Simulator 17.